As electronic innovations in the world continues to ramp up, many companies are finding their engineering staffs loaded with sustaining or ongoing designs. In some cases, great companies have exciting ideas for embedded hardware platforms, but an engineering staff with an expertise more geared towards software or mechanical designs. Can electronics distribution offer a higher level of service to meet those needs? So getting to host the current is a lot of fun for me as an electrical engineer because it gets me a chance to talk to some amazing engineering minds about the latest and greatest technologies and really where all of embedded engineering is going into the future. Uh, but obviously at Future Electronics, we're primarily a electronics component distributor. But, you know, along with being able to supply products to our customers, we also want to provide the best possible technical support model um, and engineering expertise to our customer engineers to support those designs, to help make sure you've got the information that you need when you need it and get to market faster with the best possible solutions on the market. Uh, along with the engineers that we have in the field, and hopefully many of our viewers of The Current are already familiar with our advanced engineers in, in all the cities really around the world. Um, but beyond that, we also have what we call our future design centers, which are teams of engineers that are really there to act as extensions of our partner customer engineers teams um, and, and act as design entities to do designs all the way from the ground up for your companies, help you with that embedded system if you either don't have enough engineers on staff or maybe you don't really know how to do hardware engineering design, we've got the engineering teams to do that for you. Uh, today, I have the privilege of speaking to a very good friend of mine and partner, Martin Bernier, uh, who's the director of our Future Design Center in Montreal um, and has been involved with a lot of these customer designs. Martin, thanks so much for joining me today on The Current. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Absolutely. So talk to me a little bit about that. You know, electronic you know, distributors were traditionally known for, you know, I need this part. I want this data sheet. I, I, can you help me get contact with this particular supplier? Can I get this pricing? Uh, that kind of thing is probably our, our bread and butter and what people think of from an electronics distributor yeah. point of view, uh, first and foremost. Um, we're really trying to change that at Future Electronics. Talk to me a little bit about what the capabilities of future design centers are today. Yeah, thank you, Don. Uh, our capability are pretty much, you know, standard electronic design. So what we're doing, we are a team of uh, electronic and software designer, and we are helping customer with their design. So we, we are getting involved from the beginning of the requirement to do the design, the schematic, the layout, and also looking at prototype. And we're building the firmware to able to to test our board, to validate our design. This is our goal, trying to to put um, a working design in the hand of the customers. Right, right. So you're really taking an idea from concept all the way to creation. I think you know one of the first times I remember seeing you guys in action was probably around 2008 or so. We had a customer literally, I think we had dinner the night before with the customer. They came up with an idea. They, they were a customer that didn't have any double E's on staff. Came up with an idea on a napkin. Uh, propose that to your team, and, and you guys are now in the second generation of that design, if, if I'm not mistaken. That was a yeah, pretty exactly. sophisticated design that we've taken from really concept, um, napkin concept, all the way through building the schematics, the Gerber files, the firmware, um, and eventually a full-on operating system and, and GUI user interface on that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, so talk to me, uh, can you give me kind of an idea of some of the designs that the, the uh, FTC teams have worked on and some of the things that you guys have done? My God, we did we did the design from you know a, a LED driver to high end IoT device with multiple peripheral for communication like Bluetooth, cellular, you know high end design with uh, MPU processor with uh, DDR4, eMMC, and so on. So we already uh, we over the year we did so many projects you know almost 10 projects a year and so we we have experience with i'll say you know like almost everything you know we touch everything there's no there's no project or kind of design that we didn't take part of it i mean from customer design to industrial design we we look at everything pretty much yeah yeah i, I think you know you mentioned some of the processor designs that you guys have done you know, I think some of the most impressive ones I've seen is, you know, with uh, like an Item X8 yep. from NXP quad core processor 
very, very complex just for the layout portion of that. You've got an eight layer board, in some cases a 10 layer board, uh, just to do the breakout on that. Um, and, and, and for that, to, to develop that for the customer, um, bring up the, the Linux BSP in that kind of an application. Now, I think in that, and we've done that for a number of different customers. One of the Ooh. customers I remember um, was doing an AI uh, ML application. They wanted to do all the actual application code, but you got the initial BSP up and running got the, the entire hardware design done, and now that customer is off and running um, and, and very successful with overall hardware platforms. Exactly. Yeah. And then the other thing that's been really impressive for me, I think, for the FTCs has been just from the standpoint of, you know, customers that just have something very simple, where they've got a, a wireless radio, whether that's Bluetooth, cellular, mm -hmm. Wi-Fi, uh, a microcontroller to basically communicate with that radio, uh, and they collect data from maybe a single sensor or a sensor array, those have been designed, you guys knocked those out in a, a matter of a couple of weeks when it's a fairly simple design like that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. You know, these days the, the, the main issue is really to get the prototype because of the accessibility of the component, but design time didn't change a lot. So in a couple of weeks, we were able to do the schematic and, and the layout and, and, and so on. And our the way we're working is pretty... It's pretty much like an extension of the design team of the customer. So we are working on a schematic, but we're not going away with the schematic for a couple of weeks. We we are working with customer like daily or weekly. We get weekly uh, meeting with them. We we go over the schematic. We go over the placement together, and we you know gonna go on our side to do the layout and go back after with the customer to. Uh, to evaluate the design, to validate the design, to be sure we capture all the requirements before going to prototype. And, and even today, we, we change our, the way we're doing the design because of the fact of the, of the component shortage. So now what we are doing is like kind of a quick schematic just to review everything and we look at the component. Are they available? Are they, what's the right pricing? And, and yeah. so on before making component selection when it's too late you know i've got prototype coming and we made some some mistake by not choosing choosing the right component so these days we're doing we kind of improve our process to add that to uh, to the way we're doing project well i think in this environment that's a must and hopefully oh, yeah. it's something that we you know even once this allocation situation that we're in today here in 2022 um, hopefully, eventually it will end and, and lead yeah. times will shorten up a little bit for us. But I hope that we as engineers continue to think the way that you guys are thinking today um, about, you know, is this product going to be available? And, and am I beholden to just one particular device or can I design in such a way exactly. that if this device has a long lead time, I can jump easily to this mm -hmm. device um, and, and really think about that earlier in our design cycle, not when it's too late and we've got to do a board spin, which obviously is very expensive. And it's also an advantage for us. As part of a big distributor, we are we have access uh, to the inventory. We know what's going on in the market. We yeah. know what suppliers is able to deliver on time and so on. So before we do the design or even at the the, uh, the, the block diagram stage, we look at the component, we look at the selection, and we are able to look in our multiple supplier and say, oh, that's the right fit for the customer. This is what they, they really need. This is the right the right price point. This is the, there's inventory. There's multiple customer buying the same part. So there's some advantage to, to, to work with us to know what's going on in the market before yeah, making no design yeah, no, I, I think that's a huge part of the value proposition that hopefully we bring overall and certainly within the future design centers, we bring, uh, you know, to the designs we're doing for customers. So, so once we do that design for a customer and the FTC does the design, customer brings in, this is what I want. You guys go through, you actually design it for the customer. What then happens with that design? Does the customer own all the intellectual property there? Yeah, the customer own the design. It's their design. You know, like I said that at the beginning of, of the interview, we are working as an extension of the design team. So we're not like a standard third party. So when we are working with a customer, we, we put a contract together for sure. But in that contract, we say that they own the design. It's their IP, it's their design. They they will take, we, we are helping them to bring the design to a working prototype. And from there, the customer is taking this design and bring it 
to production, you know, and doing the final testing and and final certification, and we're still there to help them. I mean, we're not going away. We yeah. we we are a partner in that design, so we help the customer to be sure that they are going to production with the, with the design. Right. Yeah, you know, we want to make sure they continue to be successful in that. Exactly. And then you know, I think we've seen some customers that have taken that design and they've got all the files for that Rev One design, and sometimes. They go to production with that for a few years. They say it's time for Rev 2, but we want to do Rev 2 ourselves. Um, and so they've got all those files from Rev 1. They can quickly modify. Um, you know, and I think you guys are primarily using Altier for like the schematic and Gerber designs. So yeah. they can take those files and, and, and then from there yeah. uh, adjust that however they want on the next generation. Exactly, exactly. We use Altium Designer. A lot of customers are using Altium Designer. Sometimes yeah. we work with other tools, but it's always, you know, a challenge for... Uh, for the conversion, so we prefer to stay with our tool, but cost, we, we are supporting the design, so it's not a big deal for a customer, you know, like we, we had customer, we came, you know, like last year because, you know, component end of life or shortage, and they ask us to modify the file, so they're, they're gonna be able to go back in production, and we did that for them, you know, good customer, they're right. still buying from us, hey, let's take a couple of days, let's do the modification and, and, and go. Yep. Yep. I think that works really, really well. Exactly. Uh, what are some of the reasons you've seen customers come to the FDC for designs? What, what, what's what been driving that? Because we have seen a lot of growth lately. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think it's pretty much because they they have less hardware engineer and more software engineer in their team. Uh, we see also customer that use third party to do the design, but they didn't have access to the file. They don't own the design, so now they they are coming back to us to to work uh, on on their new revision or their new design. But I will say the principal reason is pretty much that there's more software engineer than hardware engineer. So they're looking at someone who's going to put their ID together on, on the hardware side and being able to give that to their software team to continue the project. Yeah, I think definitely it's something we've seen. I think we've also seen a lot of companies that, that are primarily software engineers with brilliant mm -hmm. ideas out there, starting a company, startup mode, um, and, and they, they need somebody to come in and do the hardware. They, they're going to be brilliant. They want to build their own application. That's their special sauce. But we can knock out that hardware for them very, very mm -hmm. quickly um, exactly. and help them get up and running. That, that's been great. And then the other thing I think we've seen a lot of, I think you'd attest to this, has been customers where maybe on the last generation of product they designed with a, a part that's got a very long mm -hmm. lead time today. And they're saying, hey, can you guys redesign this for me? Just the hardware, maybe port some of the firmware over um, with a part that has a lower lead time. That's been something I think you guys have brought a lot of advantage to customers as well. Exactly, exactly. And they can have their their engineering team, you know, working on a, on a specific part of the design. We're working on a design right now and the customer is taking care of all the high power portion of the design. And we are working on the, the MPU uh, portion with the DDR4, the MMC, you know, section and everything. And they're taking care of the rest of the board. So it's like a partnership. We work together on that design, but for them, it's a uh, they accelerate their time to market because they have another team working on another portion of the design while they're right. doing other stuff. You know, sometimes they're better with the power than the yeah. uh, um, the MPU portion of the design. So, yeah, no, no question, no question. And then, as far as costs, I mean, obviously, you know, we're business. Uh, we're, mm -hmm. we're not completely altruistic on this. We want to be a great partner, and we want to make sure that we're providing value both to our customers, um, but we still got to to do business for ourselves as well. Are there NREs associated with this, or or how about do you guys go about you know kind of making sure that there is a business return for the company, and how's that business engagement work between the customer partner and ourselves? Yeah, the, the, there are some fees you know, for sure. We need we need to you know pay for the prototype, pay a part of the design, this uh, the design hardware that we're putting in the de on on the work. But you know we're trying to be fair. We're trying to be fair with the customer. So what we're doing is we're charging an NRE upfront, and it's also it's a competitive NRE based on the market. Sure, but yeah, what yeah. we are doing is giving back you know a part of that nre when customer is reaching a certain volume of production so after a year six months two years of production we're 
we're giving them a kickback on, on the NRE. So it's a very good deal for them. And, and for us, we are securing our business. You know, this is what we want to do. We want to, to be sure that we work together as a partner on a design, that we have our fair share of, um, of component sell on, on that particular project. Right. Hey, our goal is to sell parts. That's obviously yeah, exactly, our business model. Exactly. We, we want to sell parts. Yeah. Um, and we're not up, up charging for those parts. Uh, you know, I think certainly we've seen a lot of cases where customers have come back and said, hey, you know, Todd, I, I've seen the, the pricing on this part that I'm supposed to be buying from you guys that you designed in through the FTC. I'm seeing a better price over here. And we're like, oh, oh gosh, we, we need to fix that. We have communications with our suppliers. Yep. We fix the pricing. The expectation is that our pricing should still be best in class mm -hmm. in those opportunities. We just want the opportunity to make sure we're, we're, exactly. we're doing that business with the customer to kind of pay for our engineering services um, exactly. and, and recoup the, the time that our engineers have put into it. Yeah. So. Uh, I think this, it has, and both sides end up in a great situation. There. Exactly. This is why there's no hidden fees in, in the component price. At the end of the day, we right. charge an NRE up front. It's clear. Everybody is aware of it. And, and there's a contract, and it's simple. I mean, there's no... And the, the component buying aspect is exactly like another customer that's going to buy from Future. They got the same quoting process, and they work with their sales team, and so on. So there's right. nothing... Everything is is clear up front on when we're taking a design. Right, right. No, I, I think that that works out really well for everybody. Um, it, what what would you say are really kind of the the ideal type of project for the FDC to take on? I, you know that that's a that's a difficult question in a way. I, I'll say that when you've got a project that the customer you know want to put it to production that that you know there's a forecast that's the the, the, the customer is involved in this project, there's already a team, you know, a software or hardware engineer, and you're working all together, like, like a good partnership, those are the best projects. That's for me, those are the best projects. And those are the ones that we're seeing su success lately are exactly that, you know. Customer only have a, you know, software engineer team or customer is looking for a second revision of his design, and they they have like a market, they have a forecast, they know what they they are looking for, and and they are they already work with us. They know how we work. They know our price. They know our our inventory. They they know our support. It's the best project that we can find for sure. Yeah, I I think that again we use the word partnership because I think that's key. Mm -hmm. I think if we're in a situation where we are seen as an extension of that engineering team um, at the customer. I think that's where things really work the best because oh, yeah. the communication is there, um, the, the, the understanding of expectations both on our side and on, the, on their side um, is excellent. And I, I, the, 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 uh, the amount of accolades that I know I get um, from the, 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 the end of result that your team provides is just incredible. You guys, I think, have been great at that. Um, and it's become a, a skill that I know I'm very proud the future electronics has built. I think it's it's been a foundational way of us to support engineering. And I think it's an area where we're going to have to expand that capability as a distributor um, in order to continue to provide the best in class engineering support into the field out there. Yeah, we have, we have a very, very good team and experience and seasoned engineer. It's almost all engineer in our team. And we have experience like, you know, 20, 30 years of design. So we saw a lot of diff different projects in our life. And we're bringing that to the customer to help them with their design. And sometimes it's just, you know, a portion of a big design. And sometimes is uh, is the complete design that we're taking on. So, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. And, and, you know, so we've got your team, obviously, in Montreal that's handling the majority of designs yep. in the Americas. We also have teams in Europe. We have teams in Asia. Um, so we've got teams around the world really to support this kind of model. So, um, you know, I, I think it's really exciting what we bring to the table. And I hope that, uh, you know, this is something that, that more engineers will reach out to us to and look into because uh, we'd absolutely love to partner with companies exactly. out there uh, in this way. Martin, thanks so much for joining me today on The Current. You, really appreciate your time and expertise, my friend. Always an absolute pleasure. Uh, thanks also to our audience. We really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking the time to kind of learn a little bit more about how we at Future Electronics see the evolution of what our role as a distributor is to other electrical engineers out there, what we want to provide to other electrical engineers. If you have needs, um, whether it be for parts, for, for overall design advice, or if you're looking maybe to have a design done for you, 
I would absolutely love to speak with you. Please reach out to us at Shaping the Future at futureelectronics.com. Again, that's Shaping the Future at futureelectronics.com. We would absolutely love to speak with you and help you in your next design. Thanks again so much for watching us here on The Current. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.